just thought I'd take a short break just to let you know about becoming a breakout bestie. So we've launched a brand new subscription service for the small businesses that need us in your pocket. So why do you need to become a breakout bestie? Well, it's just a monthly subscription that gives you access to us when you need us. There's a closed group where you can ask us any question you need. There's also an anonymous posting on. So if you've got clients in the same group, you can ask us anything and we'll get back to you. Sometimes that'll be a quick answer. Other times it might be that we need a bit more of an in-depth chat. There'll also be uh, posts and information on the latest trends, the latest strategies for social media, upcoming things from HMRC that you may have missed, just anything you need to make your life easier to run your business. You'll also have access to our client base and money off discounts and vouchers for various services we've got coming out. This is brand new, it's only just been launched, so have a look, go on our website under besties and sign up soon. Think you're not green fingered. Start with one. Yeah. That ask someone what's the easiest plant is to begin with, yeah. and that's how you build your confidence. Yeah. And kill plants, not intentionally, obviously, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> stop spraying them with bleach. <laughs> <laughs> that's just how you learn. Yeah. Um, because it's nature, and we can never compete with nature. Yeah. And I still kill plants unintentionally, but it's just what happens. Yeah. So yeah, lots of trial and error. Hi and welcome to Business Rainbows and Unicorns, where there's no such thing as failure if you don't try. This podcast is specifically for business owners or wannabe business owners. Say you've got a side hustle or you've got a passion for something and you think it'd be absolutely amazing or you see people that do amazing things with their passions and what they enjoy doing. Well, you can do that. So please subscribe and we hope you enjoy listening to this episode. So hi and welcome to Breakout Business Rainbows and Unicorns, where there's no such thing as failure if you don't try. Today we have on the lovely Chantelle from Grow My Wellbeing. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. So Chantelle is possibly the nicest person I've ever come into contact <laughs> with through the business. Oh, and thanks. Every time I think you're just like this ray of sunshine, which you have to be to obviously keep your plants going. <laughs> and I'm kind of envious because you can keep a plant alive and I can't. To the point um, I helped someone with open gardens uh, the other day. They opened their garden. Yeah, I did some posters for them. And as a thank you, she's made me a little crochet hanging plant. Oh, she said, perfect. Oh, you can keep this alive. <laughs> We all kill so, plants. I yeah. kill plants. I still kill plants. It's oh, nature. Well, the one you gave me the other week, I was stressed out because it's gone. It's starting to go yellow. So oh, I need to send you a picture. Send me a picture. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. So, send me a yeah. picture. <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Tell me about Grow My Wellbeing and yeah, the plants. The plants. <laughs> okay. So, Grow My Wellbeing started about three and a half years ago. Um, so, I. Just a bit of background, grew up in South Africa, so I had very much a nature-based upbringing. So I always had my hands in soil, I walked around barefoot, and there are so many lovely plants just growing wildly in our gardens. Very different to the UK. Very different to the UK. If you forget a plant outside, they yeah. freeze to death in yeah. the winter. Um, so... I started three and a half years ago because it, it really was in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. It was such a stressful time for all of us. Um, I was homeschooling my two boys. And if anyone can cast their minds yeah. back to homeschooling, it was yeah. really <laughs> difficult. So at the end of every homeschooling day, I found I could go back to my plants to water, propagate, repot. And that was such a mindful thing for me to do, to get my hands dirty, um, it was a uh, sensory feeling. It was completely relaxing. Nice. And then I thought, if I find this really relaxing, then others must do as well. So I created these well-being planting kits where I started to propagate my own plants. And then I measure out all the soils that if you was, you know, to get a, a kit, for example, you get your houseplant soil, your bark, your perlite, your worm castings and coca quire, all in little packets measured out. Oh, wow. And the idea behind it is... Rather than just selling the fully grown plants, I wanted others to mix and get hands dirty and smell and feel and yeah. then plant their plant. And understand a bit more. 
Yeah, and see, you know, especially for children, where it comes from, it can grow from a small cutting into a large plant. Yeah. So that's how my business started. And then I started running workshops and I now have stockists and I now kit out offices with plants. So <laughs> was that the plan when you started or was it just to do the kits and you were like, right, okay. I'll yeah, do. no, I mean, the kits was my starting point. My my focus all the time is about plants and well-being mm. and to give people that connection to nature, whether it's to put plants in spaces, whether it's to run the workshop so they can get their hands dirty. But I never really thought when I started off, I thought always workshops would be a, a cool idea because I love people. I love yeah. plants. I think I've put this on my LinkedIn. Yeah. I'm a South African people plant loving person and combine <laughs> all of that yeah. is, is what I do. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and I'm always just looking for opportunities because I think plants are for anybody of yeah. any age. I mean, I run care home dementia care home workshops I work with children children's workshops yeah. I work with corporates for team building days so, you know so it's really for, for yeah. anybody to connect to nature and probably the have only a plan. time when you go well what's your target market and demographic and you try and niche it down it's like that's difficult you can't, no can't niche it down with you can you? no and I think I've stopped trying yeah now. <laughs> yes. it's just really yeah <laughs> whoever wants a plan yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quite funny because I said to um, someone the other day I th um, that I go to another class with, and I was like, oh, "You did one of Grow My Wheel Beings um, terrarium workshop." She's like, "Yes, I did." I was like, "Oh, I saw it on Facebook." So oh, were you? Yeah. I said, and I was like, "How was it?" And she was like, "Oh, do you know what? It was absolutely amazing, oh, and we good. were wowed by the size of terrarium we got for the cost of the workshop." Oh, good. They said they'd done a couple of workshops before, and she said they were just really tiny she said yeah. it was lovely it was lovely to do yeah this was a proper like yeah wow so she's good said, I, I looked after it I'm great nurturing that's it. good to be back <laughs> that's good to so yeah so yeah. that was good to know good so, yeah. Thanks. yeah so what is it how's it evolved in terms of like you say you're kitting out offices and yeah so i so i started with my kits and then i started workshops and then I think I, I saw this office um, doing some renovations and I thought they need to have plants in that office yeah, yeah. because it's so aesthetically pleasing to look at. It's, um, you know, surrounded by greenery. The colour green is relaxing. And I just suddenly had this light bulb moment of I'm sure they could do with some plants yeah. in the office. And then I just contacted them. So one of my clients um, in Sow Market is my biggest office client and they've got 300 plants in there now oh, wow yes. <laughs> so maybe a bit much for for some yeah <laughs> but yeah I just uh we're done now with that project yeah so I'm there every couple of weeks to maintain but oh, nice. it's just to think about you know if there's a space I yeah. always see people it's like you know on a crisp packet yeah. some see potatoes yeah, we yeah. see potentials one of yeah, the crisp yeah, packet yeah slogans for example yeah. it's a bit like that i see an office yeah i see plants yeah <laughs> so but we used or to any do space. that when i worked for green king and i was in charge for the services it was the same as having phs for the outside watering and no. outside plants and everything and we i remember always being approached by very large companies mm. i had one that um was for indoor plants and what to do and it was like i don't know in a pub and you have to choose depending on obviously yeah. the right pub and the right brand. Um, and the other one was smells. So they sold like chocolate shops, the smell outside the shop. So if they didn't make Interesting. the chocolate shop, um, make the chocolates in the shop, yeah. you could have a release of smell. To attract. It's a bit like the bakery at mm. the supermarket. So, you know, you walk in, there's fresh bread. Yeah. They sold the smell. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know that kind of thing know, existed. Exactly. And I didn't know about that. And the same, I didn't know about the plants. So I just thought, oh, well, the manager will buy the plants and look after them. Yeah. And now, obviously, knowing myself, I've just like, the same as why Milford in Bloom do the front ones. Like, yeah. Hands up, I will not look. You have to water them for me yes. because I will forget. I've just not got that in my nature no. to remember to no. keep it alive. <laughs> but that's good because it keeps someone like, yeah, the job. Exactly. So it's absolutely perfect. You know? And the yeah. thing is, it's that. Obviously, especially with 300 plants, mm. you're not going to have someone in that office to know how each of them needs no. shade, sun, 
Exactly. And it's not just watering. It's no. I pest check, I repot, I prop them up, I reposition them. Yeah. So it's a big job of, you know, doing something like that. And it's not a lot of knowledge as well. Yeah. Yeah, but I love it. And where's all your knowledge come from? Is it just the interest in it? Or... It's the interest you know, it's trial and error, like I said. Learning how to keep I always say to people, if you have never had plants or you think you're not green fingered, start with one. Yeah. That ask someone what's the easiest plant is to begin with. Yeah. And that's how you build your confidence. Yeah. And kill plants, not intentionally obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> stop spraying them with bleach. <laughs> That's just how you learn, yeah. Um, because it's nature, and we can never compete with nature. And I still kill plants unintentionally, but it's just what happens. Mm. So yeah, lots of trial and error. And I remember in lockdown, my husband and I were almost fighting over who's going to go to the supermarket because I wanted to go to the supermarket, yes, for food, yeah. but every time I left with two or three plants, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just built my collection yeah quite quickly to so um, the house that's just covered I th I've got a plant I yeah I've got a plant at least one in every room nice. and then I have a plant room yeah in my house for my plants but I have a shed as well for my plants and yeah. when we drive you know we go somewhere and the boys are in the car I've got two boys and they see a garden center and they would just say oh Dad, just drive. Yeah, just keep just going. We're not stopping. Going. <laughs> We're going to be here for a while. <laughs> yeah. So they know by now. It's just yeah. an expectant thing. Yeah. <laughs> We've got to stop and go in there. No, the, yeah. So, so have you always run your own business then? Or you... No, I haven't. So I, so I grew up in South Africa. I left when I was 19. Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I lived... I went to America for a year, so I lived in America for a year, um, and I was a nanny to two boys, and those two boys are both married now, and they're both doctors, and <laughs> it's quite funny. They were four and eight at the time. Wow. Yeah, and then I kind of studied part-time. I went to a, a college part-time, and then I was due to go back to South Africa, but then I spoke to a friend who I went to school with, and she lived in Surrey, and she said, just come to the UK for six months. Mm -hmm. We'll travel a bit, and then you can go back to South Africa. No, so I, okay, come to the UK. I thought yeah. it was six months. I had a two-year visa. Yeah. But then after being here for two months, a mutual friend introduced me to Mark. <laughs> it's always the way. And then I ended up staying. Yeah. <laughs> so that was 2003. So what's that, 21 years ago? Yeah. And then... We're still 21. We are, Yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yes. Feel it. Yeah. Or some days not. Yeah. Um, and then I, so I came to the UK and then I did my degree in HR and coaching. Okay. And not in France. Not in France. <laughs> completely different. And then I, uh, I got a job at Twinings Tea oh. where oh, we used to live in Hampshire. But it was a 12 month maternity cover so I thought okay I'll do that for 12 months um kind of see how it goes yeah. and then I ended up staying there for 10 years oh wow yeah so I worked it's for Tiling. I don't think there's more of a British <laughs> job that you could have got <laughs> no, <who's there? laughs> so, it's lovely I loved it oh. um yeah such a nice nice company to work for love the people um so I, you know, kind of did HR, coaching, mental health side of things, um, looked after their graduate scheme, uh, equality, diversity things, so all of, all of that. It's still very people-orientated. Very people-orientated, because I love people. And then my boys were born when I was, you know, kind of working there, and I had maternity leaves and went back. But then I decided after 10 years, I just, it's time for a change as it, yeah. as it is, and... I left and then I kind of went back for three months to do a project and then I w left again and that was it. <laughs> and then I, I wanted something to work around the boys. Yeah. Um, so I thought, you know, I love, I love um, plants yeah. and I love the mental health piece and I love people. So I just kind of combined all of that and started my business. 
Yeah. So three and a half years ago. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's the best thing about when you start, because I obviously get loads of people in here and they're just like, right, I want to start a business. And I'm like, oh, it's brilliant. What do you want to do? I want to run a cafe. Like, okay, fine. Are you good with people in this? And normally, after about five to ten minutes, when I'm more excited about the idea than they are, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, are you sure? And yeah. then we kind of either, they go away and obviously think about it. And it's because it's such a risk. I think that's the thing. It's like you're either yeah. risk averse or not. And mm. it's it's that fine balance because you have to take that risk. For sure. Starting up on your own. And so you, I kind of leave them with that. But I also then leave them with, well, what do you enjoy doing? Like, because if you're running a cafe, you, you're going to pick people that aren't nice. You've yeah. Got, uh, you're going to have days where no one comes in if it rains. Like, mm. there's so many. It's it's brilliant. And I think people go into shops. And I think we're very good at business owners of just like, oh, hi, yeah, how are you? What a lovely day. And you've got your real yeah. face on. Yeah. And it's, but the day before or, or that morning, it might have been an awful morning for yeah. whatever reason. So I try and give people that bit of like, mm. it's not all moonbeams and rainbows. It's, yep. it is it's it's tough. It's a difficult part. Definitely. But try and gear them towards about almost like three things. What do you love, Mike? Yep. What are you interested in? Because you have to have the passion and drive for whatever it is. Mm. If you ever got the passion and drive for a cafe, you're not, you're not going to do it. Oh, I really love people. Well, that's great. But is there something else you can do with people? Because yeah. You're going to be on your feet all day. You're going to have people moaning their coffee's cold or yeah. whatever. And so there's it's, always something. Yeah. And I think it's particularly difficult if you've been in a job for so long mm -hmm. and that's all you know, mm -hmm. it's difficult to almost get your head out of that. Yeah. So, unless you have an idea, like this is exactly what I want to do, it's really difficult to come up with something because yeah. if you've been somewhere for very long, yeah, it's it's tricky. And um, it's hard because I think it's knowing what you'd love to do. Yeah. It's like, I still don't know what I want to do in my life. Yeah. <laughs> and I just know, I think it's always evolving and changing. Yeah, and exactly. I knew I didn't want to work in corporate. I knew mm -hmm. that didn't suit me. So yeah. I wanted to work for myself. But it's like, I see, I speak to a lot of virtual assistants because that's how I started tech yeah. career out. And they're like, oh, well. But I said, but if you're really good to take an HR as an example, why don't you specialise in HR as a virtual assistant? Oh, is that a thing? And I think mm. so many people don't think it's no. that a thing. Like 13, 14 years ago, if someone said to you, oh, you're going to make a living and have your own business in plants and never a thing, I'd be like, nah, never. <laughs> I never just... thought that. Because when, I don't know, it's about you, when I left school, it was... Do you want to be a policeman, an accountant? Yeah. It's everything with a name. Yeah. And the thing is, or a trade or whatever it might be. Yeah. And it's like, it's... you can make up your own thing. Yeah. Whatever's your passion and your thing. Yeah. But sometimes it takes someone else to guide you oh, to that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's it's interesting. No, but I would never have thought that I'd be doing this. Yeah. And make money out of it. And make money. I know. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think you're kind of, we're of the generation where you didn't, you go to work to work. You yes. don't go to work and love your job. And some people are very lucky and did. Yeah. But some people just. That's yeah. true, actually. And where I grew up, it's a very small town in South Africa. And in South Africa, I guess, depending on where you are, I don't want to speak for everybody there, but it's difficult to find a job. Mm. So people almost take jobs for life and yeah. you don't move around you don't you can't always be picky yeah. um so I feel quite privileged to be able to have had you know a job in HR and coaching and yeah. such a nice company and now doing my own because I've got the choice to do that yeah. but you can't always be that picky no um you know especially where I grew up yeah. um yeah different way of life, though, it's completely it? different yeah yeah, yeah. I've had a couple of people come in recently that have just moved from South Africa. Oh, one lady, she was just like, she'd only been here like two, three days. And she was like, I can go on my bike. I can only cycle around. Yep. And she said, I keep walking. Can I walk anywhere? And I'm yeah. like, yeah, pretty yeah. much. She goes, I could just walk around the fields and my son can go off. Yeah. It's and it's safe. It's safe. Yeah, it's a different way of life. And she just, I was saying to her friend just day, because we both grew up here. And we have just like, you, it's when you get, you just don't realise how lucky we are. No. Don't 
you take no. it for granted that we can yeah. just walk across the field. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, I feel fortunate having grown up there mm. and for the lifestyle I had because it was outdoors and mm. it was safe where I grew up. It wasn't, a, it's not a city or anything. So I had quite a sheltered upbringing mm. and I feel really privileged for that. You know, you're even now when we go and visit, you will see at night hippos in the road and monkeys and you know Amazing. my kids are <laughs> almost excitable seeing a cat yeah, <laughs> yeah, walking yeah, here. yeah. <laughs> but it's a different way of life and yeah. I feel privileged to have lived there yeah. but uh I'm equally glad that I live here now yeah and yeah. it's knowing and I think what well, do you think that's part of how easy find it easier to deal with people and speak to different people because mm. you must come up like well like you say you work with every yeah now. yeah so it must have made it the background must have made it easier to yeah i guess living with. in south africa and there's different cultures there living in america living here yeah loads of different cultures and people and everybody is just so different and yeah. i find people fascinating i love you know, um, I try, I'm, I'm not, whatever floats your boat. Yeah. I'm, I don't want to be judgmental. I don't want to. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm not in your life. I'm not yeah. in your space. So I think definitely that upbringing and the living in a different country has helped because yeah. just do what you want to do. And yeah, exactly. Say your lane. And yeah. <laughs> this is exactly what I was saying yeah. the other day. I said, there's two types of people as well. There's lovely people and really not lovely mm. people. And you just gravitate towards the lovely ones. Yeah, and it is what yeah, you yeah. It's just and that's you attract your tribe, yeah. um, exactly for sure. That. Yeah, yeah. Do you yes. find you become a bit of with the well-being side of things? Do you become a bit of a therapist as well with people chatting to you at the? Yeah, workshops. yeah. Workshops. workshops, workshops are lovely, and I. It can either go two ways, and actually, during a workshop, we probably have both at the same, mm. you know, workshop. So people sharing and talking and life is stressful and this is going on but then half of the other part of the workshop everyone is quiet because they've got their hands dirty they are so in that moment of yeah. doing what they want to do but they don't actually realize that they are having a mindful yeah. time um yeah oh, yeah it's nice i love it that. so i'm off to a dementia care home after this um and it's quite fascinating, actually, because, you know, dementia, they, I don't, I'm not a qualified, you know, dementia worker, but I've worked with them a couple of years now. And they say predominantly dementia patients remember the past. So their past life. So yeah. they might say, I want to, you know, they might be 80 years old, but they might mm -hmm. want to go back to their mum today, yeah. or they might want to go back to their house, or they remember they went dancing with a friend, but they don't remember the immediate mm. or what they did yesterday or last yeah. week. But when I, this one that I'm going to today, I turn up, sometimes I turn up, and there's one particular lady, considering she has dementia, she remembers me from, I'm there every six weeks. Yeah. She remembers me from six weeks ago, which is... Lovely really lovely yeah. and she doesn't remember my name no but she remembers me that's the plant lady so yeah, i walked yeah. in and she's always there she's that's always lovely. planting and i'm the plant lady so i thought that's oh, amazing but that. considering she's got dementia yeah she remembered she remembers that experience mm. and that's lovely yeah and it's the i guess it's the um because you're touching soil it's all yeah. the tactile stuff as well it's not just yeah it's giving them something else to do yeah as well, on the soil um part actually there's something it's a healthy bacteria in soil which is i'm not i'm not a scientist or anything but i've i've read out yeah. and geeked out almost on all of these done research. Done my research <laughs> on all of these different things but there's um there's something it's a healthy bacteria called um, microbacterium vacae so when we get our hands in soil it releases happy endorphins okay. it raises our serotonin levels it grounds our nervous system so it's so therapeutic yeah. having our hands in soil. Yeah. Obviously, just be careful if you do, you know, have a yeah. cut and yeah. things like that to not to get dirt in there. But yeah, there's so many benefits because when I start to propagate, I take you know the plant out of the pot and I propagating means getting rid of that soil and getting the plant ready for another pot or mm -hmm. splitting the plant. 
I can really go into a bit of a trance just to I zone out completely. Yeah. So it's such Get a else, just I do so but, therapeutic. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's lovely. But I think that's the other thing. I grew up with people who had, like, we. I remember growing up and my great granny had, um, they would had a florist shop years mm-hmm. and years ago. And they were retired when we used to go down there. But her garden was just full of plants, herbs. So the Sunday lunch, I was sent up to. Oh, the lovely. Sunday lunch. I'm in nice. Just little things like that. Yeah. I don't do anymore. And then no. my mum's best friend had. The first part of her garden was for the kids to play. The second part was like her allotment and she was growing all different things. And that was nice. And then, and you then talk about and follow people like Greg from Sunshine and Green yes. videos. And he's doing that in real in real life and yeah. business. And yeah. he's got his different strips of land and they're all for different things. And I'm seeing more and more on Facebook people like, can I get an allotment? Can we have them? Yes, yes. There's another guy, a lad, a guy, lad in the village, um, Tom Green. He, um, his mum helped him grow, or I think sort of there or thereabouts, but he focused on growing plants to sell. Yeah. So he was selling tomato plants just on their hedge. Yeah, just on that. And that was through COVID as well. They were doing a lot of that. Yeah. He, um, and then he subsequently then got an allotment. It got flooded twice so in the last 12 months. So he's kind of lost the... He did all the work, of course, then that stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like there's more and more people that yeah. get back to that. They yeah. get back to the nature thing of growing plants. and it gives us a purpose. Yeah. It gives us that satisfaction of growing something, especially for kids. I think it gives yeah. them, you know, confidence to grow. It gives them that purpose to look after another living thing. It's a bit of empathy there to yeah. care for something else. Um, and it's satisfying mm. to grow and see something from nothing yeah. grow into something that you can consume or enjoy in your house yeah and i think you then get that with people that they that i was having a talk with a friend the other day and we were talking about social media and i said oh excuse me come off facebook personally mm. because i'd find i'd go on there and just scroll scroll but also, I'd say, oh, Chantel did a workshop. Oh, that's nice. Oh, look, there's a picture of her smiling. She's done the workshop tick. So in my head, consciously or subconsciously, I'd be like, oh, well, I've seen that. I know you did a workshop. We had a good time. So when I next saw you or a friend that had been on holiday, so I, mean, I wouldn't naturally talk to you about it. No. So I was finding more and more. That was kind of my tick box anyway. So I've come off it. And now I've noticed I've made more of an effort. I was like, interesting. Oh, Chantel, nice to see you. Have you done workshops lately? Yes. A couple of people have gone, yeah, put it on Facebook. Yeah, but I'm not I, scrolling in. That's very, very but interesting. Tell me about it. Yeah. Because actually I'll get more out of you going, oh, yeah, it was a really good workshop. I had mm. 10 people come. We did this. We did terrariums. We looked at this. We looked at that. I'm saying with a friend for a holiday, I'd get more information than just flicking through. Yeah. Oh, they had beach. Do you holiday. think you've seen it now? Yeah. You think you've seen it on the surface, but you don't yeah. get that in-depth conversation no. of how was it? What, yeah. what else did you do? Yeah. And would you recommend doing it or going or? Yeah. And that's very true. A couple of my friends, I was telling one of my friends a couple of weeks ago, and she now texts me every couple of days. She's like, I've not scrolled on Facebook. She goes, I've gone on to look for something. But rather than going and looking, scrolling, going, what was I on here for? Like yeah. half an hour later, she went, I've got so much more time. Mm. And I think you'll talk to people. Well, and I don't know if you found that this with plants. You'd be like, oh, well, how about you could bring your own to my, oh, I don't have time for that. Yeah. You do have time. Yeah. But how much time? What is your screen time? Exactly. Exactly. Out. Realistically, as hours. I mean, I've looked at mine before and I'm like, that's shame. I know, same. Because I'm on, I am on socials, you know, Facebook and Instagram, and those are my ta- two main ones, and I use LinkedIn. But it can really consume your time yeah. because I don't have that physical shop. Yeah. I have stockists, but I feel like I always want to let people know, yeah, what I'm doing and yeah. what's coming up. You know, creating a reel and creating a post and a yeah. thoughtful post. Yeah. And using hashtags, it's really consuming. Yeah. And I think especially being self-employed, it's just me. Yeah. So you have to tick the boxes. Oh, oh yeah. One of those jobs. Yeah. I now have an accountant. Best thing I could have done <laughs> is to have an accountant. Yeah. 
but there's the marketing, there's the forward planning, there's the ordering, there's yeah. Ad- admin, admin, social media, messages. invoicing. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So social media is really good for certain as- aspects. Yeah. But very, very time consuming. Yeah. And I think it's good for business because obviously I'm still on it and I mm. run it. And the first thing I do now when people come in, I said, if you're using Facebook and Instagram, just use Meta because it takes you off the personal element. It's all your business one. There's bits and pieces you need to do and it's better for. But mm. at least it then you're on it for your business. But yeah. you need to, um, I think you said to me, you listened to a podcast about you can't sell a secret. Can't sell a secret. You need to be out there pushing and posting. For sure. That's great. But that's productive. That's the mm. business. The yeah. flip side of that is winning is it's a bit of a time sucker. Yeah. But how did you get to the point, like you say, um, an accountant's the um, best thing you've ever done. Mm. How did you get to the point of sitting there and going, do you know what? That's what I'm going to outsource. That's what I'm going to get someone else to. So um, I think I'm getting busier. I'm busier than I was two years ago. And... I think anything HMRC, because I'm, I'm a limited company, mm. you know, because I work with, you know, quite large businesses, kitting out offices and, and things. So a limited company works for me. Yeah. But anything mention of HMRC, um, <laughs> company's <Brown> house, <laughs> it makes my skin crawl. <laughs> Brilliant. I, just, I could just, I don't want to be a part of it. Yeah. I don't want to hear about it. Yeah. Oh, obviously I did it, but I, I just, yeah. no, I've just decided that enough you. is enough. I yeah. just, I just cannot do it. I can't deal with it, yeah. but I have an account. Who, who does that for me now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always turn into a real child when it, I just stress and I just panic. I went I just a lot of tradesmen like that. Oh, Farley, I've got brown envelope. <laughs> Can you just come and get it? Can you just deal with that? I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I got to the point of. Okay, I need I need help here yeah. because it's. I think I'm becoming better at noticing what is not working, yeah. what I do not want to be doing. Yeah. Whereas before, I would just just go on a treadmill yeah. and just. Well, how could I possibly not do it? Because yeah. I it's part of my work. It's yeah. part of my job. But now I stop myself and go, well, hang on a minute. This is making me feel yeah, yeah, yeah. stressed. Yeah. This is making me feel uncomfortable. And I'm actually stopping myself now to think about what else could you do? Yeah. It sounds like such a simple thing, but I wouldn't have done that in the yeah. past. Well, I don't think you see the wood for the tree. No, you don't. Your you're just carrying on on your treadmill. Yeah. And it's just this endless to-do list. And you're like, right, these are the three things that I've woke up at four o'clock this morning stressing Yeah. About. So I'll do those and then on to the next thing. Yeah. There might be a workshop or your normal appointments or whatever. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's and it's hard. It's it feels a better place mm. being able to do that. So if anything doesn't sit right with me or doesn't feel right with me, I follow my gut. I've yeah. got quite a good gut. And I now I might not act on it immediately, yeah. but I will do something about it. Same thing happened this morning, for example. Mm. I've got a really busy week and I've st- been feeling stressed out since yeah. waking up that I am having to fit everything in and then I thought to myself well hang on a minute I have an appointment in tomorrow mm. Tuesday but I can do something about that because that's just a very flexible visit for me to go to a client they, yeah. they don't care when I pop in yeah. I just tell them I don't have to go in on Tuesday yeah. I can reschedule that yeah and whereas it will be fine, will be fine yeah, which yeah. I have done and it's like a weight has lifted off yeah it makes you feel so much better if yes. it's something really important that's been booked in the diary yeah. for weeks or something I can't move yeah. I won't and I'll yeah, always yeah. commit and you know do it but if it's if it's a flexible commitment yeah I'm learning now to cut myself some slack and just yeah. to say and not be overwhelmed that's it. okay and it's a nice feeling. Yeah. And I wish I'd kind of done it sooner. But that's just business, isn't yeah. it? You learn. Yeah. And you want to say, yeah, I think I get to the point where I want to say yes to everything. Yeah. I'm scared or saying someone. When you're employed, you can have a couple of off days. Yeah. And you still yeah. know that paycheck's going to be in your bank for sure the last day of the month. For sure. When you're self-employed, if you, like... I don't know, run a workshop or like me do some training with someone or someone comes in. If I've got my game face mm. on or I might come across a bit rude because I'm just not feeling it, 
that could make a difference to my income that day. Definitely. And I think that's the... So you kind of want to say yes, because you always mm. want to make sure I've got this income, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Yeah. And, but if you haven't... <clears throat> it's... Uh, it's yeah. difficult. It's and really I, difficult I'm a yes words. person. Yeah. I say yes to things and figure out later how to yeah. do it. Same. And I'm a people pleaser as well. Yeah. Which is not good. No, no, it's not. <laughs> so that... So on that note, people pleaser... Mm. really love what you do mm. you can do it for free yeah those two are not good combinations no. when you own a business no. <laughs> exactly <laughs> and funnily enough i was thinking of you the other day so we've um i signed up to it years ago um there's a cool thing called buy me a coffee i can't remember I, if i sent this to you before. yes yes you've mentioned it yeah so we've now really like jigged it set up a cup qr code and we're going to get a poster for the window and i'm also going to get a little spiel because i will wake up some morning so i i have do not disturb on my phone from about 8 p.m i see that because i send you a message and yeah. it says they have not been notified no <laughs> so good. all my notifications that's go great off. i'm normally asleep by 9 p.m yeah most nights but i'm wide awake at half five so you will get me in the morning if you've got yeah. me in the morning i'll be on it i'll be with it anything past about 6 p.m you're not going to get much out of me no. my social battery's gone but i found i'd wake up so of course what you do wake up look at your phone yeah and i'd have three to five whatsapp messages or um social media messages asking me for stuff and i know we've said about this before mm. but i'm like that's five or ten minutes for me to answer and help you mm. that i'm i'm not you're not getting paid to you know so yeah be like oh Chantel, here's my cactus how do i look after it what do i do with it yeah well if you went to anywhere else like a shop you would expect to pay for that and i think people it's this weird thing with messages mm. that people seem to think it's just going to be like oh blah 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 it's this so i'm now trying to write a spiel so i can go yes it's this if you feel like i've helped you and you're really grateful just buy me a coffee yeah and it's trying to get to that and it's how the besties come about that people then a the people what because i get people coming in and they'll ask which is fine but I was saying to a friend this morning who runs his own business, it's the people that you've already got that relationship mm. with who will go, oh, my God, what do I owe you? Do you know what? No, because I know you'll help me out in another yes. way. You know that relationship's both ways and they go yeah. back and forth. It's the people that I don't really have a relationship no. with, but they want something from me, which is fine, and I'd love to help and people, please, yeah, be yeah. that person. And you want to keep your reputation up here. Yeah, that person. yeah. But at the same time... As it, with your business head on, yeah. you're thinking, hang on a minute. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, or, you know, I think at the le very least, leave a review. Yeah. It's such a simple, free way yeah. or share okay. a post. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always thinking if, if I post something and it's a good post mm. and people love it so many of my followers would like it yeah and then the next day i might post something that they see but yeah. might not like i just want to kind of say you're helping out a business yeah if you like consistently yeah. because you know we we know how the algorithm works it yeah. shows things that are popular yeah so it's it's a free thing to support a small business. If you're not going to pay, you don't yeah. need to spend money. You no. don't need to spend money on that business. But like, comment, yeah. share, leave a review if they've done yeah. something helpful. Even mm. just plant advice yeah, yeah. or business advice. Yeah. It costs nothing. Yeah. So I almost wish we could get into more of a mentality to support small businesses like yeah. that. Just to think, okay, how can I support? I'm not going to spend money on that business. No fine absolutely yeah. fine but how else can i support that small yeah. business yeah. um yeah it's we, um I, i'm always coming up with different post ideas and one of my um we were talking last week about david beckham's now advertising aliexpress yeah i saw that brilliant lovely if that's what and he's made millions but he's got millions and i'm like but actually yes i can't obviously pay david beckham to come and co-work here and I don't think I'd want him to because I probably wouldn't make much honey out of that. People would be here for him, not for me, funnily enough. <laughs> well, but they're your business. If he just shared, like, loads of small businesses yeah, and supported everyone in, even where he is in London, there'll be all these cottage industries. Yeah. Versus AliExpress, which 
makes a lot of money, so they've paid him millions. Yeah. So I'm just like, it feels like it's kind of broken in some way. For sure. Because actually that will mean the absolute world to people like us. Yeah. Sally Express, oh, TikTok, we've got a sponsorship deal, brilliant. I just, mm -hmm. I don't know, I just, I yeah. know it's all about money and I, I get that, but at the same time, like you say, um, you see those memes of just like your biggest supporters will be people you don't know. Yeah. My friends had a stand, have a standing joke. None of them know what I do. I'm like the Chandler Bing of the group. They've just like, <laughs> every time I go on holiday with one of my friends, she's a vet nurse. So people are like, what do you do? So like, I'm a vet nurse. And they're like, all oh, right, specialise in equine. Oh, brilliant. That's fine. What do you do? And she's like, don't ask. No one <laughs> <laughs> and it's not until then you know you ask them then what do they do and if they run their own business i'm like oh well, I you will get this. it yeah. <laughs> it's fine. yeah but i think you're right that you just want people to like you say just leave me a review yeah because that google review will help my google page it will help definitely help that it just raised or sharing a video mm. and just it shows it to your followers so you might not want to come to a workshop or be no. interested in plants but some of your friends or family might, might be. yeah and but you had a post go viral didn't you? i did unexpectedly because i created a reel and it was a popular audio mm. and i thought well, i'm gonna use the audio and it was the audio basically was if you buy a plant you propagate it you make another plant so i the the video was me taking the big mother plant mm -hmm. cut a bit off and then i propagated a piece and popped mm -hmm. it into soil and that baby grew so very very simple and easy yeah. and i thought and what you do i'm literally just showing people how to propagate and yeah. make a new plant yeah but i think paired with the audio yeah it kind of it did go viral and I've got over 2 million views on that. And I'm thinking, <laughs> can my proper day-to-day -day work? Yeah. Just please do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the terrarium workshop. See these workshops over here? Yes. yes. Look at this office I've kitted out. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the important stuff. Can that please go viral? Yeah. Yeah. So that was just completely, you know, not expected. But, mm. and, and I think I spoke to you about that. Mm. So... You know, a reel, as you know, is a very quick snapshot of something. Mm. I am not showing how many months it took for that baby plant to no. grow to where it is now. Yeah. And we all know it's not going to grow new leaves overnight no. and have new <laughs> leaves the next yeah. morning. Um, I, th I think we all kind of know yeah. that. But even, you know, to the point of social media, you will always have people commenting on things yeah. that you just think gosh really should i for example I, pr I propagated this plant popped the baby plant into soil few months later after it yeah. grew i showed it again and it kind of you know yeah. had leaves but someone took it as if to say as if i put the plant in and the next day the leaves were there <laughs> overnight <laughs> I mean I didn't even think about that when I posted yeah. it because that's how money grows on trees this is how money grows yeah. on trees yeah. but so my point is everyone will always have a comment on social yeah. media whether it's favorable one or not yeah. and I think if you you know post and you put yourself out there you kind of have to expect yeah. things like that and did you find you got any business from that viral reel I don't, I, I don't know, to no. be honest. I don't know if people have followed me on socials yeah, from bought. that reel and have yeah. bought because I would ask my immediate workshop people yeah. sometimes where they'd find me from. Yeah. But I, I can't put my finger on no. directly because that reel wasn't directly related to what I do. It no. wasn't related to an office kit out yeah. it wasn't related to a workshop or a care home yeah. you know it was a propagation yeah everybody around the world can do propagations and they are yeah. interested in it so yeah. i think it wasn't that two million views was yeah. not everyone in my immediate area no. so they weren't immediate clients and i think the fact the point to make is that it didn't yes the reels went form up, yeah but so your business didn't go no there no I have a lot of people coming in. So, sorry, visibility on my page did. Yeah. But then that doesn't equally, that, that doesn't, yeah. you it know, equate to money hundreds yeah. of new followers, uh, um, new office kit outs yeah. or workshops and things like that. Yeah. yeah. 
And I think that's what we get. We get a lot of people obviously come in and they're like, oh, I need help with social media. And we're very much of the fact of, I'll help you. We can do your social media. And we've got people who just don't want anything to do with social media. They don't want to do it. They don't want to get involved. And that's fine. And we can do that for them. But we'll never replicate their tone of voice and their business. Yeah. So I would always rather go, do you know what? Sit with me and I'll teach you social media. Yeah. But the majority of people are like, I just need thousands of followers. And mm-hmm. I'm like, but that, you don't want that. You want the engagement. You want yeah. bookings. You don't want that. And I think a lot of people think if you go viral, then all of a sudden it's going to equate to thousands of pounds. No, bookings of business. And I'm like, it doesn't work. No, that, I mean, that would be lovely. Yeah. That would be absolutely amazing. But it's like the average reach. I think I looked the last um, nine, 90 days. Yeah. We've reached nearly 18,000 people. Yes, but it doesn't equate Brilliant. to... No, I haven't your, had 18,000 people. No, through the door. No. Yeah. No. But it's been that three years of just gradually organically mm. growing. Yeah. They're organically growing like that. <laughs> is... I can probably look through a lot of our followers and go, oh, they've sent an inquiry or oh, they've shared something yeah. or oh, they've done. So I, I can re- relate to Yes. That. And that's ultimately, I think, as businesses you want to achieve that brand and that, oh, it's great, my well-being. Oh, I've seen them before. Oh, I'll book that. I keep seeing their terrarium mm-hmm. ones. So finally I'll, yeah. I'll book on. So. Yeah. Yeah. Social media is great. Um but it does come with, you know, I wouldn't say downfalls. That's not the right word. No. But, you know, for me, generally, I think the plant community is gen- is genuinely one of the nicest communities to be part yeah. of in uh, on socials. I, yeah. It's just, lo- it's lovely. Um, well, everyone's happy because their hands in soil. Well, yeah. For the indoor <laughs> Our serotonin yeah. levels are yeah, raised. Yeah, yeah. So that's nice. <laughs> um, but you will always find someone who, so on that reel, that particular reel that I just mentioned, for example, this one that this person commented to say that I am misleading people <laughs> thinking that <laughs> the leaves yeah. have grown overnight. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm not sure who else would be thinking no. that leaves will grow overnight, no. but I think I didn't even comment yeah. because I thought that's okay if they yeah. think that. Let them think that. Yeah. I know the majority of people don't. Yeah. Um, it was just a fun reel yeah. and part of the fun really I'm not here to mislead anybody no. <laughs> I got told off a couple of weeks ago for calling Andy the nerd oh but it's not nice to him oh wow I agree. it's a term of affection he actually loves it probably him. Oh, him so yeah. the nerd they're like no it's not acceptable it's like okay, okay. just leave just move on agree to disagree, disagree. yeah, yeah exactly. uh, and I think that's how you need to be of the same as not every customer, like you said, not every customer is your customer. No. Not everyone's going to want to buy a plant. Not everyone wants no. to come to a workshop. But if I think if your content's consistent and happy and positive, they'll know people. Yeah, yeah. So they'll attract a tribe. Because it's only a case of sitting in a pub and someone going, oh, I'm looking for something to do. And it's like, oh, I've seen this company online and they do this. And they do, and they'll be like, oh, okay, so... Without even knowing it, and you'll never know that, you won't get people to come to the workshop. Oh, where did you hear from me? Oh, well, actually, so I spoke to so-and-so, they said, and they'd seen you on social media from yeah. this post. So you're, you're still sure. I always believe something leads from something. Mm. So what I mean by that is if I go to an event or if I go to, because I sell at markets and, you know, yeah. and if it's not a great market yeah. financially for me, um, I can guarantee you that something else will come from yes. that. Yeah, hundred um, percent. That might lead to something else. Um, so I never feel disheartened or regret no. going somewhere or doing something if it hasn't quite worked out. I think yeah. it's a learning, but I yeah, also think exactly. it's exposure. Yeah, exactly. I think people don't always see the value in that because they. It's like I say to people when, how small Sudbury is, and I'm like, but you might put something out on social media, or you might tag, do a hashtag of Sudbury Suffolk, but so many people know so many people. Yeah. And it might be that they've been to their market, and then they've seen you at the market, they've seen you on social media, and then someone else has said something to mm. them, and you're just like, 
Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Now I've had almost three touches yeah. of my well-being, and now I'm going to follow you, or now I'm going to buy from you, or now... Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, a couple of years ago, I got... I was at, actually, I was at a market selling, and this lady turned up, and she said, my mum is elderly, she's got a lot of cacti that she can't keep anymore. Mm. Would you like it? Could you care for it? Could you give it a new home? So I said yes. Uh, a couple of weeks after that, I went to collect the cacti. They are huge, really old, but beautiful. <laughs> anyway, I cared for them. I repotted them and they are doing really well. My latest workshop in Sudbury, a girl turned up. Bearing in mind this was two years ago I collected these plants oh, from wow. this lady, right? This girl turned up and she said... You were the one who collected my, my nan's cacti. How are they doing? I know. Love that. Small world. Yeah. And I said, they're great. This is what they look like. And I showed her a picture. Yeah. So that's lovely. And yeah. you never know who's connected because so many people are connected and have yeah. a connection. So, yeah, to my point, if you go somewhere and you think this is not a great event, yeah. I always think something will come from it. And I think that's... Then that's the importance of the retail face and being mm -hmm. lovely to everyone. Yeah, lovely to that person that's looked, picked up and gone, oh, that's lovely and walked off. Yeah. But they might come back next time. Yeah. They might see someone else or they might find you on social media. Yeah. And it just it just could always evolve to absolutely. Yeah, I always think you never know who's watching. No. You never know who's on there. And yeah. 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 So is there anything you do or have done differently? Anything that you look back and go, so obviously now you've said about seeing the wood for the trees a bit more and taking a step back and not being overwhelmed. Is there anything else where you're like, oh, if I'd have known that like two years ago or? Yeah. So I'm one thing I can think of is social media. So I started off by being now. Okay. So before I carry on, um, social media i guess experts gurus might not like my comment but <laughs> <laughs> i so i started off my business being very rigid being very i i get a content plan is great and i can yeah. advise that to people yeah so i started off having a content plan monday to friday i posted religiously of different yeah. themes and i had different pillars and i still have that yeah but because it's just me and I haven't outsourced my social media. Yeah. I just now post whenever I feel like on I want to post. Fly, yeah. On the fly. Perfect. Because I still have my pillars yeah. of mental health as one. Tips is another. Um, I have my themes and my yeah. pillars that I post. But I don't post religiously. No. Because it is really hard work. Yeah. So I now post on the fly. If I want to say something. If I've yeah. been somewhere and I want to tell people. I do that. Yeah. So... And that's the exact advice as we give people. Okay. It's not the advice you see from the social media. No, so I don't online. want to get slapped on my no, hand no, for no. advising the wrong thing. No. Do what you do and what's yeah. right for you. But my point is, it's exhausting to sticking yeah. the whole time to Monday, Friday, content, posting. Yeah. I can't do it. Not only is it exhausting, and I haven't scrolled back to obviously see... But I bet your content was diluted a bit. Mm. You weren't as passionate about every post and no, oh my word, this is happening. Initially, yes. So, yeah. I do love posting. Yeah. I love sharing with people. But also to that point of people pleasing, giving things away yeah. for free. Yeah, I give exactly. an awful lot of things for free yeah. on my website to because or, sorry, on my socials because I I'm not here just to sell plants or yeah. to run workshops. I'm here to teach people and yeah. educate people so there's a lot of resources on my site that are for free yeah um and I love doing that yeah but yeah I guess that's one thing I started doing differently is just not posting yeah religiously but posting when I want to post and yeah that that is just yeah one thing that I've changed um can't think of anything else I'll come back to that one see what else there is. I guess the other thing is just to say no to things if it doesn't feel right. Yeah. Um, being a people pleaser, that's difficult, but I'm being a bit more... I think if you are if you can let your gut override the people please. Yeah. I've learned from taking clients on that 
I've had the gut and I'm like, no, 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 I've got to say yes because the money and the people yes, please and yeah. everything else. It fizzles. The relationship doesn't work. Mm. It fizzles out. And I think that's the most important thing that I've seen from that mm. point of view of just like, and because we don't work to contracts, we're very much like, we work together. If it doesn't work, we shake hands and we yeah. like, say yeah. luck to each other because there's nothing worse than going, no, this is really uncomfortable, but we're mm. going to force you to stay for three months. It's yeah. So I think if you... And I think for experience, whether it's an event or a location or whatever it might be for you, yeah. I think if you go with that, gap, yeah. it's otherwise it's. I think enjoyable. also the more you, the more your business carries on, is about being clever with the questions that you ask before you commit to something. Yeah. So I just suddenly thought of this example of this. It was quite a well-known magazine. I won't name who it is, but contacted me to say do you want to collaborate okay. and do you want to um give some plant bundles you know the plant bundles that i mentioned yes. earlier about the soils and the plants do a bit of a giveaway to families yeah. to give plant bundles away so i think this was probably about two years ago so quite the beginning of my business i said yes because it's obviously good yeah. publicity is yeah. it's so lovely that they've reached out yeah. and it turned out that it was really no publicity for me no it was me giving away freebies really? yeah. and i got nothing else of it yeah. so for sure now before doing anything like that i will ask questions and i will be a bit more strategic and clever and yeah what will i get out of it yeah because in it i'm me? a business and i have to ask what's in it for me so yeah, asking the right stuff before committing. But it's difficult when you just start off because you just want to do everything yeah, and you get do. your name out there. And someone and like that, a magazine. Yeah, well, you're yeah. Well. yeah Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Oh. And also, you've done something else exciting, which we're not going to talk about. Yeah. So I think we're going to have to do a, uh, yes. another yeah. one after that. Yeah. So, what's so, your space? so to <laughs> that point, when I said earlier, you don't know who's watching... I was thinking of that thing that I was doing because they found me on socials. Did they? So, because I asked and they found me on Instagram. So I think, yes, Instagram and Facebook and all different social channels are great. Yeah. You don't know who's watching, yeah. but it can be exhausting. So just do what feels right for your... And what fits your brand. What fits your brand and your business and your time, Yeah, I think. So yes, we could talk about another time. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, well, we'll have to follow. So... Chantelle's all her um, uh, contacts, links, everything will be in the show notes. So please go and follow up and definitely follow up because you need to know now what we're what's talking coming. about, what's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> what will be so it will be shared absolutely everywhere. You will see her everywhere. Yeah. So yeah, but thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me. It's been us. fun. And uh, yeah, give her a follow and subscribe. And as always, please like and subscribe and share with someone you know who loves plants because as we've said, it's... It could be anyone. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. For Thanks. <laughs>Thanks for listening to this episode we really hope you've enjoyed it if you have please share with a friend who you think needs a bit of help with starting a business or even their small business which they've already got going please like and subscribe to our podcast which always helps a small business or small podcast like us and check the show notes we all have everything in there relating to the episode which you might need might want to read and links to anyone we've interviewed and certain subjects we've spoken about and thanks for listening.